Welcome back. You're still watching this this morning on Channels Television and we're broadcasting live from Lagos, Nigeria. Well, as I said before, we went on that uh, quick break. Today we'll be looking at uh, latest developments from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And uh, we know that recently the Nigerian Stock Exchange actually launched its uh, X whistle portal. And uh, to talk more about this, and um, I'm being joined on the program by the General Manager and Head Legal and Regulation Division of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Ms. Tinu Awemi. So, uh, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Okay, so this is a whistle. I have a whistle in my hand and Ms. Awe has been um, very kind to furnish me with it. We, we understand that uh, whistleblowing, literally, is like uh, sounding the alarm on something and so she's going to actually be explaining to us how and when should investors or consumers as the case may be blow the whistle so whistle blowing sounding the alarm on infractions fraud and the rest of it market infractions and for the rest of it that most likely will come up you know because we're dealing with numbers here but why did it take the NSE this long to actually launch it because you see they've been talking about it it was actually supposed to be launched in 2013 so why is it coming now okay i think it's one of those things that what we should be looking at is not how soon but how well and we have a portal that's very very robust um you're right we wanted to um, launch it in 2013 but we we decided that we'll launch it in the first quarter of 2014. there were a number of things that happened and we felt that it was best that we delay the launching a bit so that we'll have a very robust platform. So for example, one of the areas of robustness that we added to the platform is the opportunity for feedback. Mm. So if you go into and you leave a tip or a referral, um, as the case may be, give us information, you will get a reference number. And that reference number allows you to always log back onto the portal to ask questions about the progress with the tip or referral that you left. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, some people feel that whistleblowers identity should be protected Indeed. now if you log on to this portal and for instance you get a reference number it means it can whatever it is that you've reported can always be traced back to you and so there might be tendencies for um, harassment and victimization and the rest of it we're very conscious that people may want to harass or victimize whistleblowers and so it's, there's an opportunity when you log on to the portal to decide whether you want to leave your tip or referral anonymously so you can do it anonymously. You get on, you provide your information, and then you get the, feed, the, the reference number. And you always, when, you, when you're inserting the reference number, it will track back to the, com the, um, the tip or referral that we already have. And so that anonymity goes on. And until you decide that you want to become an anonymous if you declare your identity, or we're mandated by law or policy to disclose information, um, really, nobody's going to know who you are. Now, what happens if your system is hacked? Uh, well, we believe that our systems are very well protected. We're constantly protecting our systems. We have very robust information security. Um, but, you know, I think that there's no online system that cannot be subjected to hacking. I think uh, uh, sometime last year, there was um, a bug on the NYSC um, platform. Even platforms in very, very developed countries can be hacked. So that's a risk that anybody that goes online takes, whether or not you're in the whistleblowing sector. Mm. But because we're dealing with whistleblowing and we know that, the sen that there are sensitivities about it, we do have information security around it and we constantly check our systems at the, uh, at the NSC um, to ensure that they're robust and that the latest technology is protecting them in terms of security. Mm. So why the X and the whistle? Because uh, <laughs> you know, we just normally should just have whistleblowing or just blow the whistle why x whistle okay well we we have some branding around x at the exchange if you've noticed we have x issuer which is the issuers portal which allows companies to submit their information from the comfort of their office mm. if you go on our website you will see x compliance which is the info which is information where the pro we, the exchange itself provides information to the public uh, about its listed companies. Uh, we have X Broker Tracks, which is uh, has an X at the end of it. So it's a branding thing. Ah, it's a branding thing. Um, yes. Based on the latest uh, Xtreme that we have now. Precisely, X we have Xtreme, Xgen. Xgen. Yeah, you're totally correct. Mm, yes. It's still in line with all the branding. Precisely. So cr could you just uh, tell us the difference between whistleblowing 
and um, making a complaint. Okay. With whistleblowing, you're an individual, you're a member of the public who believes that you have information about um, an infraction or a violation of a rule, a regulation or a law that affects the capital market and you're providing that information to us. You're not necessarily somebody that has a personal interest in the in the in the in the information that you're providing to us you're just a member of the public a concerned and responsible member of the public with a complaint you have a personal interest so you're complaining about x and y that x did y to you which is a violation of the rules the laws or the regulations and you have to prove your complaint because you don't make allegations about x or y and then just get away with it by not saying anything now, the difference with whistleblowing is that when we get a tip, a tip or a referral through whistleblowing, we um, then get on the, we do a preliminary analysis of that tip or referral. And then we decide whether we're going to open an investigation on it. So it's a, it's a completely, it's a slightly different track from a complaint. For a, from a complaint, we're asking you to support what you're saying. We're asking you to verify. We're asking you, for example, if you're saying that um, somebody um, took, uh, took your money and didn't provide uh, in, in the investments that you paid for, we're saying, okay, give us a copy of the bank draft. Give us a copy of the receipt that the person gave you. With whistleblowing, it's a different track. That's not what we're doing. Mm. Because I, I was just wondering how you'll be able to, to see you know, the complaints that you get from the genuine ones and the mischievous ones. Because trust me, there are a lot of people who are very unhappy probably with the way um, a company where they have vested interest in is, is performing. And so they feel that this is going to be a very good opportunity to get back at them. So how are, are you going to ensure that or how is your department going to ensure that that doesn't happen? Well, we'd like to believe that there are not a lot of people <laughs> out there who believe that. But uh, there are quite a they, number of unhappy believe, shareholders. They, well, we're, we're working every day to reduce their number, and I'm sure that you will agree with us on that. But um, back to your point, um, one of the reasons why we have a, we insert ourselves, so to speak, within the, the um, tips and complaints, sorry, the tips and referrals process for whistleblowing, is precisely what you're saying, that we know that there might, may be um, people with bad motive who want to just defame um, people or defame institutions. And so that's why we say when we get the tip of referral, we will do a preliminary investigation and decide at that point whether it's worthy for an investigation to be opened. So I think members of the public, uh, market participants, listed companies, and individuals that, that represent them should rest assured that this is not, an op this is not a, ven a vehicle that to the which exchange will, be, uh, will allow for people to use for weak chanting. Uh, with a complaint, however, because there is evidence, uh, you know, it's a less, um, it's a less open to abuse. Mm. We're conscious of the possibility of abuse, and I think the steps that we have taken uh, to to decide whether to open an investigation or not are robust enough that that will not happen. Mm. And so at what point uh, will you bring the legal arm into all of this? Okay. When you say the legal arm, I think the legal arm is open from the beginning because what, you, what the tip or referral is about is the fact that somebody has violated the, the, the law or violated the regulation or violated the rule that, that is applicable to them. Now, we are a regulatory authority, and so we have regulatory power. We do not have criminal prosecutorial powers. Uh, but you will, know, you will note that uh, last year, probably about six months ago, we entered into an MOU with the EFCC. And um, some of the, the, the things that um, we're supposed to do post-run to that MOU is to work closely with the EFCC to, um, d to address criminal activity within the capital market. So where a tip or a referral comes in, um, certainly if it's somebody who is under our regulatory, if it's an entity or somebody who is under our regulatory power, we will pursue the regulatory, uh, the regulatory arm of doing things against the person. Mm. However, where the conduct also constitutes a crime, we will refer that conduct to the EFCC if it's within the EFCC's ambit or to the other other um, law enforcement authorities such as the police and what have you. Okay. So now for instance, um, if I log a complaint sure. on the portal, mm -hmm. how long will it take for the NSC to investigate and let me know uh, how soon they're going to you know, address it? Okay. It really depends on the amount of information that you give to us. It's, there, it holds you of factors, as you can imagine. It depends on the amount of information that you give to us. It depends on um, the, the type of matter that you are that you that you are addressing so say something like insider trading for example we have a lot of that <laughs> 
Harriet, no. <laughs> I'm well, not going to let you get away with that. But it's no. the, well, you know, we've had a lot of investors talking about this. They, and, you know, a lot of times the reason why <laughs> it, it crops up is because some investors, especially when they get to the annual general meeting, that's where they go to to lay their hearts bare. They are very unhappy about it. No, and so I, they have I, to be protected. No, I, I certainly think that we're doing a lot to protect investors. And I think if you see uh, the, the rules that we're making, which, um, which I'm sure that you're aware of, the actions that we've taken, uh, in, re in the recent past, the fact that we're, that we're um, ventilating the issues in the market through things like broker tracks and ex-compliance, letting people know the penalty status of companies, the penalty status of brokers, so that people can make informed decisions about their investments. And then just um, also being a, a regulator that is approachable. I think you will agree with us that we're doing a lot to protect investors and we continue to do that. It's a work in process and it's a constant work that you keep going back to, mm. to continue to make yourselves more robust. Mm. So now, at what point should people act to stop uh, illegal or otherwise unacceptable behavior? What should, what should that flag be that they feel that, uh, look, this, this isn't right and I, I ought to report it? At what point should that okay. be? I think um, for most people, I think human beings, we generally have a moral compass. So um, some of us have totally subsumed that moral <laughs> compass under, under all sorts of other things. But I think if you're aware, somebody's in the capital market and you're aware that they're doing something that doesn't sound, that doesn't look right. So somebody's uh, taking money and nothing is coming out at the other end. You should let us know. The, and rest assured that we will investigate. So it's not a one-size-fits-all where, where I can say to you, this is the point when you make the complaint, uh, or this is the point when you give us a tip or referral, as the case may be. But where, whenever you feel that somebody's not acting right, um, and you have some, um, uh, there's, there's some facts that make you uncomfortable, uh, somebody's in a position of trust, and you feel that you're not getting all the information that you need to get. Mm. Um, Somebody um, uh, is in a position of authority or where they have information that other people don't have, and then suddenly they are um, expending uh, capital in a way that seems strange to you. You should let us know. Because we have that filter, which is we do a preliminary analysis, um, you, you can be rest assured that um, we will investigate, we will determine whether this is something that we should go forward with. But it's not a one-size-fits-all, to answer your question. Okay, so it's, it's, from, from what you've just said now, mm -hmm. it's not going to be only people who, are actually, um, who actually have something to do with the capital market that can blow the whistle. Anybody can blow the whistle as long as you feel that there's fraud being perpetrated or there's some infractions of some sort that has been carried out. Most certainly anybody any member of the public that has information not has, just their interest but has information <laughs> has information yes can blow the whistle and when we say blowing the whistle we're saying going to our website www.nsc.com.ng looking for the whistle which looks just like this and then clicking on it and following the options on the website to give us the information mm. so if for instance I find that something has gone wrong, you know, as a, as a, as a concerned member of the mm -hmm. public. <coughs> right. That's what you should do as soon as you find out that something wrong has happened and then you feel that it needs to be corrected. Do it the right way. Don't make it seem as if you're victimizing anybody, Miss Tinuawe. Thank you so much for coming on the program this morning. It's been an interesting conversation. Of course, you can go to the NSC website to thoroughly understand what this whistleblowing is, this X whistle is all about. But Business Money continues in just a moment and we'll turn our focus to something else entirely when we come back. Join us again.